Hey everyone, Shark here with another 1v1 on the map Pacino Stalemate. Playing as the Axis, we have Alpenwell coming from Germany. He's the number 29 ranked DAC player. And playing as the Allies, we have Toilet Guy from Thailand, who's the number 62 ranked USF player. He's using the Advanced Infantry Battle Group, so if you've ever struggled with countering Rangers from the USF, this is a good match for you to watch. Co-casting this one with me is my buddy Garrett from the channel Turtle War. As always, links and timestamps will be in the description below. And with that, we'll roll into the video. All right, everyone, we're back into the game. We got Alpenwell here, uh, right now at the bottom of the screen, the south side of the map, playing as the DAC. And then we've got Toilet Guy playing as the Americans at the north end of the map here. Um, so I've got Garrett, Turtle Boy, with me. Uh, and we were just talking about, I, I hope Alpenwell uses the Espionage Battle Group, but instead he's going to lock in Italian Combined Arms and get Bursas out right away, as well as a crowd shoots in. Oh yeah, he's starting right into it. I, w I was asking, I wonder what the DAC meta is right now for 1v1, because you don't see a lot of DAC 1v1 play. And, and talking to some people, I know that they are they think DAC is kind of a struggle in 1v1, and I can see that. They they need so much manpower uh, for their upgrades to make them tenable into the late game that they I think they can get pushed out by the infantry that the allies can mass. And then you know the battle, the espionage battle group I really like, but I feel like its sweet spot is in team games. If you're forced to spread your units out, it's not as powerful. And yeah, that the funk wagon can't be everywhere, and you can only plant so many beacons before that becomes a manpower drain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so up and well, getting a 250 out now as well. So he's got bursas, crowd shoots, and he'll have a 250. That's some decent mobility uh, and capping power. Meanwhile, Toilet Guy went for two scouts, and now he's going to get two rifles out. I mean, he selected the Ranger battle group. So this will be interesting to see how he plays the Rangers on this map, and then how Alpenwell counters it. I feel like with the, the Ranger weapon drops, the RNG can be a thing, right? If the Rangers don't get bazookas, then you're forced to side tech either into a weapon support center to get zook squads, or get a motor pool. Uh, to try to get AT out. But if they get those Zooks, they can do a lot of damage to vehicles. Yeah, it's it's a huge risk. Because I think some of the, like, if you drop it and get two bars, I feel like that's kind of a waste of munitions, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It is it is a lot of RNG. Alright, so second Panzer Pio squad for Alpenwell. He's going to throw them in the 250 here. Little mobile capping power. Some, uh, you know, manpower proof uh, anti-infantry play right here. I don't see the flamethrower upgrade yet. Toilet guy just started the tech for grenades. He's about 15 seconds out. Yeah. It, it makes sense against the DAC. And you see him pushing hard for this central fuel. You gotta remember, on this map, the 1v1 version, the high fuel points are in the middle, as opposed to the 2v2 version where the high fuel points are on the flanks. So decapping this is a bigger deal than you might think. He almost gets the snare off. But he just breaks the uh, the animation, and now the flame half track, not gonna chase a solo rifle squad. Instead, oh, there's the sticky the half track is gone. Quick reaction, getting those Panzer Pios out right before it explodes. Yeah. And then now uh, MG34 on the field. I think he's anticipating a high infantry build. Really like got going for the med station. He's unlocked Rangers. This is a very strong start by Toilet Guy, sending two riflemen down mid, harassing that fuel point, and then his two scouts have just been capping up around the edges. Yeah, the both double muni points on the uh, eastern flank, that's going to be really important for those range of weapon upgrades. Prod shoots and counter capping the high fuel uh, for Alpenwell. If you can keep the crowd shoots in alive, Especially once it gains veterancy uh, and it starts to get that tracer fire ability, it is a nice weapon to turn some infantry engagements for you. But I'm I'm already concerned at the lack of uh, infantry on the field for Alpenwell at this point. Yeah, the Panzer Pies are going to win the fight against the scouts here. He's pushing the crowd off the high fuel, so yeah. close to getting the cap off. Yeah, but he's going to use MG34 for support. Pios push off the scouts. And now the crowd shoots going to be able to come back in. Toilet guy going for a mortar, probably a counter this MG34. Bursa is challenging the other scouts on the western flank. Enemy encroaching 
Oh no, the crowd shoots is in trouble here. Depending on the RNG, it could get burned down by these rifles, and they're in green cover, so it's going to do very little damage. Prod decap fully caps the fuel, excuse me, and gets away. MG34 powerless to help. The rifles hop into the building. And now with the mortar, uh, this MG34 is in trouble. Wow. A little grenade on the x -fill. Zigzags through the building. Oh, the grenade just a little early, and so the MG34 is going to get away. Burst is coming to support, but they're not going to be able to do anything against these two rifle squads. Now a flak for lane coming out for Alpenwell. So you can tell he is very concerned about the infantry rush from the allies here. Uh, meanwhile, the guy, he's getting the infantry support center, so he'll have the cap out soon. Uh, but he only has two rifle squads. He has the yeah, ability. He, oh, that mortar. He might want to start thinking about converting one of them to rangers and doing that weapons call in and praying he gets some zooks. Yeah. I, I wonder what his thought process is, is here. Did he. No, he hasn't side tacked to the weapons support center or anything like that. So this is all he's got. Um, he's very short on fuel. Yeah, so that's why he's focusing. Between the mortar and the rifle squad here, he'll have both of the medium fuel points. Another group of Panzer Pios out for Alpha so, Gets the cap off in the middle fuel point. Oh, and so he upgraded the Bursas, uh, not with the bolster, but with the ability that allows them to cap quicker when they're around vehicles. So he, it sounds like he's going to use them essentially as a scout squad. Well, there's the first squad of Rangers. They're in green cover, so they'll avoid getting suppressed, but they are going to get bled, and they retreat. Now, uh, Panzer Jaeger's out. Interesting. Now that he's seen the Rangers, I, I wonder, he hasn't seen the captain yet. So he doesn't know for sure that they've gone ISC. He probably only suspects it. Um, but the Panzer Jaegers, I think, are just kind of like a prophylactic at this point. He just wants to make sure he's ready. Um, yeah, he may be out. worried about a Greyhound. This would be probably around the time I'd, I'd be getting a Greyhound out. Uh, sticky, you're gonna hit the, the half back with the Panzerigas in it, but not enough to even crit it. Black forces the mortar away. This is where having those two squads of Panzer Pioneers is really helpful. They're able to heal up that half track. I really like the Panzer Jaeger half track as like a mobile AT platform, especially to counter the Greyhound. You see the first yeah, set of weapon upgrades powerful. come out for the Rangers. So it looks like he must have got a bar and a... No, he did get a Zook. He put it on the Rifleman squad, though. I So this is something I've seen quite a bit. So you've got your, your Rangers, but you keep anti-infantry focus initially. And if they draw bazookas, you put them on a rifle squad before you uh, transform them into Rangers. And that allows you to kind of keep your rolls clean. Uh, and maximize your anti-infantry firepower early when the rangers hit the hardest. I like this. Yeah, and with the sprint, a snare, and a, a zook, those riflemen would be a very good uh, anti-light tank vehicle or movement. Yeah. Well, oh, these rangers are going to bleed quite a bit here. First zook hits a flak for lane, but he is not concerned. The white phosphorus rounds slow the rangers on retreat. Oh, well, mortar doing some damage to the flak for lane. Rangers going to get away, but... That black one is taking a lot of damage. Oh, mortar hits it directly. It deflect. Just there we go. He just moves shot. it. Oh man. Man, he almost lost that flak filling to the mortar. Still, he's got to get it far away, outside the sight range of that mortar, and he's at the risk of losing it. While all that was happening in the bottom of the map, the tag team of the Crad and the Panzer Jaeger 250, they took out a full scout squad. Oh wow. So now he's yeah, down I missed that. And now these bursts doing a great job capping up the flanks of the map. Toilet guy, he's going for advanced logistics. This makes sense. Doing another weapon call and get another rifle squad out. This is when rangers can start to snowball on you, is you get the reduced manpower cost, so the reinforcement doesn't hit as hard. Uh, let's see what weapons he gets. Where did the weapons go? 
They seem to disappear in this mode, but we'll see them once they pick it up. <laughs> Another Zook for the uh, new Rifleman squad. Yep. I'm not seeing... Mortar still hunting for this flak relaying. <laughs> I think he's putting whatever the second weapon is on the uh, artillery observers. Yep, it's a, it's, a, it's a brownie. Okay. Interesting. So he wants to keep his rangers very, like, CQB oriented. Zooks in the building are going to do a lot of damage, but he's got the two flame pyos. The flame pyos are a great counter to the use of these garrisons. White phosphorus tearing oh. up those riflemen. Mortar is still doing a lot of damage to the flag filling. Oh, these rifles. They could be in trouble here. But they, no, they're going to get away. Another rifle Zook squad coming up. Now the flak filling taking out its anger from the mortar. The mortar forced off. Tens of pioneers shredding this rifle squad with the help of the flak filling. Oh my gosh. There's so much so many flames and phosphorus units. Toilet is just sending these squads one at a time to take these on. He needs to coordinate something together with multiple squads. Yeah, I think he's so far committed into the Ranger build at this point, especially with the advanced logistics. Yeah, he's getting a weapon support center out, which he'll up, I'm sure he'll use to upgun the Zooks. But he's invested into an, a fourth rifle squad. Uh, and so he's basically, all of his anti-vehicle play has got to be based around Rangers and Bazookas. Yeah, and this rifle squad, I don't know if he set the the Q point for the barracks out there, but they just run out and immediately get suppressed. Oh, this half-track. Oh, it gets away just barely. Panzer is going to challenge. MG34 adding this to the suppression. And this is, this is textbook. You know, multiple suppressing elements to zone out the infantry push from the rangers. And then you're just basically bleeding these rifles enough that he doesn't have the manpower to upgun them into rangers. Yeah, and he's... I mean, I get what he's doing. He's using his rangers to cap points on the edge, but I think right now you need that that six-man unit. You need that in mid. You need that doing something over here. Yeah, I know they cap faster, but I, I agree. I think that's a little bit of a, a misplay. Uh, the rangers are far more powerful early game because they're, they're such a power spike when they hit the field. Uh, the tracers and the flat for length, yeah, forces off the artillery observers. Alpenwell has unlocked the strafe instead of the, the caros. Another mortar coming out for toilet guy. Oh, Panzer Pio is now at risk of going down to this infantry here. Yep, one squad goes down. I think it's because Alpenwell is worried about microling uh, on the opposite side of the map against the Rangers. Blackfilling takes a couple of hits. Oh, if this rifle squad gets a Zook shot off. Ooh. And now the Rangers on flank. They are suppressed. I think. Why are they suppressed? Did they hit a mine? Uh, there's a MG34 in the background. It had just oh, barely got it. them within range. I see it. Black Rilling pulling back. Oh, and good push by Toilet Guy. He has retaken the center of the map and the west side. But the first P3 hits the field. And I think he he's upgrading the Zooks. But man, you look Alpenwell, he's got the self-repair, which also comes with an additional 80 health. Uh, so Alpenwell's had a resource advantage, I think, for far too long. And he's using these vehicles. He's really not bleeding manpower, which is helping his upgrades. P3 is going to help the crowd shoot some cap up the side. More Panzer Pios hit the field. I think it makes sense if you just need util units. Oh, Captain gets burned out by the Panzer Pioneers. Yeah, he just needs to keep these the Panzer III and the flak truck at full health, and he's doing whatever he wants, really. Wow. Yeah, so the upgraded Zooks, it doesn't change the penetration, only the damage, right? I think so. I think it's 33% more damage. And and so you see that with the Zook bouncing on the frontal armor of the P3. 
which can be really frustrating. That's the, the biggest downside of Zooks in general, is just their inconsistent penetration. They're still kind of a soft counter, even with the damage upgrade. Oh. Somehow the rifle squad gets suppressed. I don't understand how that worked. They were in green cover, and they are, they're forced away. MG34 set up in the center, it looks like Alphamol is going to challenge the fuel here. Toilet called it another weapons drop, and he's just been getting blessed. It had another Zook in it, so now all of his rifle squads have Zooks. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. But he still only has the one squad of Rangers. Yeah. You know, a second P3 about to hit the field. He could get, if he doesn't get an engagement go his way, he could get overwhelmed here very quickly. MG34 gets knocked out by the mortars, and here comes a sprinting rifle squad in. They're gonna sticky. Oh, not enough to get the crit. More zoo shots coming in on the flak lane. And they're again forced away. The Panzer Pios, the White Phosphorus, it's all too much. You see, he really wants to kill that flak lane. I think without that suppression on the field, he'll be able to start kind of overwhelming uh, Alpha Wells vehicles and infantry. But as long as it's there, Prod shoots him must have gone down. He's uh, rebuilding it now. Yeah, I'm not even sure where that happened at. I'm looking around. Couldn't have been to a mine. Well, I guess it could it was, have. It was down in the south victory point. But I'm not sure what even did that. Oh, it might have been the rifle squad with the Zooks. Ah. Uh, Especially with the improved Zooks. It's got to only be one or two hits to kill. It's second P3. Oh. Especially because you know Alpenwell has multiple upgrades on these vehicles. The way the guy capping up the east side of the map doing a good job of managing the VP pressure. Despite the KD, like 74 to 28, zero vehicles to two, he's not that far behind on VPs, so he's done a good job managing that piece of it. A little flak filling, probably one shot can go and get knocked out, but it'll back out. Just as the rifles are forced to retreat. Oh. Those double mortars are chewing through the infantry. Yeah, but so are the double P3s. And he's going to be able to keep the artillery from from capping the fuel. Yeah. Now, Alpenwell's unlocked artillery cover. He has plenty of munis in the bank. Toilet guy finally getting a motor pull out. And. And he's definitely struggling for, for hard AT right now. Gaps at the center, so he'll actually have VP pressure on Alphamol. Oh man. Captain gets chunked down, but doesn't drop, only drops a single model. P3's back up. You don't want to get overwhelmed by the Zoop squad, the horde coming in. Oh, this crowd shoots and might eat it. Now it's just going to roll right through. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Imagine riding that motorcycle. Just passing by. Yeah. Oof. That hit hard. Uh, here oh, come and the here boys. comes the boys. I wonder, do the boys get the upgraded Zooks? I have no clue, but that's a really good question. But you can't really choose what they target. They go after the Panzerjäger half-track. Ooh. Couple of them suppress and, and even pinned by the flak filling, which is now triple vet. Pioneers forced off by Rangers in the center and almost get wiped. Flak filling still got pinned by the base MG. <laughs> Good use of the uh, the boys here. The flak filling comes all the way back. Um, now the downside is, in some cases, you're just feeding these vehicles veterancy. Yeah, I, I wonder if he... They came almost at the same time he was pushing in the mid with those three rifleman squads. He, he should have waited. He could have came around the edge, hit sprint, maybe he's got a snare off. Yeah, and there they go. They're, they're mission complete here, and they're going to head back. But because he's held these two double muni points for so long, uh, I think... He, I mean, he definitely has enough to use it again. Yeah, he, he has plenty of munis. He's going to call in another weapons drop, though. Yep. 
Captain capping up the center. So, despite the engagements, a third P3 now for Alpenwell. Uh, the VP battle is still very tight. Uh, this P3 train, I think, is just going to reach critical mass here soon. The other guy's got an AT gun out. So there is some now some hard AT to counter the P3s. That AT gun should reliably counter uh, the P3 armor. But if they catch this, like, this rifle squad out here and burn, burn, burn them down on retreat, no engineers on the field for toilet guy. He can upgrade to the ISC for rifle squads to be able to make mines. But I don't know that I would prioritize that given everything else he has to do. P3 train focusing down these rifles. Oh, one model left. Zook's hitting one of the P3s. Oh, man. And they're going to pull off before they finish that rifle squad and then drive over here to harass these mortars. And here comes the artillery cover. Mortars wisely retreat before anything bad can happen. Captain in the middle is about to go down. Yeah, it gets yeah, annihilated. Flamed out. Is that that's the second captain? That is. That's interesting. I I wonder why he would rebuild the captain. Oh, the artillery cover is going to make this a painful push. He gets a snare off. It engine crit. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. That P3 is almost certainly going to go down. Oh, rifle squad oh dies. He attacked ground, attacks ground through the smoke, kills one of the P3s. Black filling also almost goes down to the AT gun. Second AT gun out now. Those mortars, they are doing a ton of damage. Alpenwell shrugs off the loss though, immediately gets another P3 out onto the field. It's a very tough trade. Because you're not only losing the rifleman, but that one Zook. Mm -hmm. He does have one of his rifleman squads have two Zooks now at this point. Yeah. And he's got he's got the manpower, but he doesn't or he has a lot of fuel. He had manpower to upgun one of his squads. With the advanced logistics, I think he can probably afford the ranger manpower losses uh more than you might think but instead he's keeping these rifle squads i i feel like the rangers would be more durable he, he didn't get the weapons training he chose infantry assault so they're not going to be able to suppress the vehicles i think that's super powerful if you get rangers with bazookas kind of the stun effect on the vehicles like that's the best way to counter the really heavy tanks that show up later in the game Yeah, and these rifle Zook squads force off the light vehicles on the east side of the map. Versus cat for the center. Looks like the Pios are going to go try to cap up the west side. Here comes the P3 push. Yep, right into those mortars. AT gun is there he, to support. He he has his AT guns. They're split. They, they weren't even looking down that lane. I think he's going to lose one of them right here. Yeah, it's just going to get overwhelmed. Artillery observers hurt. I think Alpenwell, the play here is. Oh, he's gonna knock out that mortar. I think the base inspection is not bad. Attack ground through the hedge connects with one of the P3s. Again. So one of the P3s is almost dead to an AT gun shooting through a sight blocker. And he's gonna pull the P3 train away. Black for lane dealing with a Zook and AT gun push in the center. Gonna back up far enough to hold the VP. A chaffy hits the field. This might be Toilet Guy's savior. He's got the trades have to be clean though. He can't he can't trade the chaffy for the flak filling. He's got to kill the flak filling and get away. Versus mm. Lieri go down. It yet. Oh, did they get mortared in the middle? Looks like they did. Yeah. He's got a big kind of AT set up here in the center Man, this those ranger squads have basically been scouts all game they've just been capping those high muni points yeah why i wish i wish i could talk to him and and ask him why i know they get the increased cap bonus but i just don't see the value in that he could push with them you know right now and, and he can melt those panzer pios if he yeah. had them in mid yep 
Oh, the rifle squad's getting bled. Black filling in P3 in the center. Jackie's kind of hanging back. The rifles cap up the center. So, the other guy's still with the, the VP or the flag advantage. He's down on total VPs, but it's much closer than you think. P3 pushes with the flak filling on the Chaffee. Chaffee's hit with the white phosphorus oh, rounds. Oh. oh, this P3 might go down here. Nope, the AT gun can't get the shot off. One other AT gun gets cleared. Both AT guns cleared. Now it's just the Chaffee. The second Chaffee hits the kill. Chaffee right on time. If he can get a snare off. Rifle squads. There's the snare. Engine crit with the Zooks. Another. All right, now this is you got to push for these Chaffees. Be aggressive. You could get a couple of them right here. Nice shot through smoke. Knocks out one of the P3s. Zooks onto the flak filling. It takes a bunch of damage. And now it's at risk here. Another Chaffee on the flank. Now here are the Rangers. Here come the Rangers. Oh, man. They get suppressed immediately. Oh. Uh, I thought he was in a great spot to knock out a bunch of that infantry. Yeah. Rifle suppressed, still trying to shoot their Zooks. And so Alpenwell loses one P3 in exchange for a couple of AT guns. But in all honesty, uh, I think that toilet guy kind of came away ahead with that engagement, I think. The problem yeah, is he didn't destroy he enough. He got what, one P3? Yeah. But a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Says, I forgot my upgrades. <laughs> oh, but he does have the vehicle capping, so now the half track doesn't even have to have the Panzer Jaegers in it. All the vehicles can cap now for Optimal. Plus, you get the additional movement speed. That triple vet flak filling. MVP of this game so far. Look at the KD 160 to 43. Absolutely insane. Nuts. All right, here comes the P3 train. Now Upwell's got the triple cap on. Bullet guy's got to make this push count. I'm going to flip the camera around here. P3's bottled up in the center. <laughs> AT gun in support, some rifle zook squads. Got rangers in the center. Oh, without any AT support, they're going to get bullied by these P3s. Oh, Prod shoots in is annihilated by the Zook rifle squads. He's rangers. smoked the middle, but he's keeping his rangers in the open. He needs to put them in the smoke. Yeah, he decaps and then immediately bounces away. Rifles suppressed by the flak filling. Oh! Four armor left on that flak truck. He sprints in. Will he get the shot off? And it really doesn't look like it. And they're pinned. No luck. No luck for Toilet Guy. He's got Brutal. his AT gun set up, but they are just too far away. And now the P3 train is going to heal and cap the center VP. Oh my gosh. Another P3 on the way. You know, I think a single P3 can be relatively easily overwhelmed, but when you have four of them... <laughs> two Chaffees two on the flank? Two AT guns, two Chaffees, though. I think he could if he can get them right here. Yeah, if he can set up... Ooh, there's some good hits. Artillery cover coming in, though. And those AT guns are going to get bled. Chaffees uh, well, chunking down... Oh, but the use of the no, smoke. Chaffees are isolated. Yeah. It's not good. Oh, one goes down. Trades out one of the P3s, but it's about to get beat up. And there it is. And that's the game. All right. So, as always, we'll start off with a quick review of the build order. Alpenwell playing as the DAC, locking in the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. So he starts with his Panzer Pioneer, gets a squad of Bersaglieri out, then gets a Krod shoots in. So he has a lot of capping power right off the rip. 
He gets a 250 half track and an MG34 and then a flak fairling, which ended up surviving the whole game and like Garrett said, had a ton of kills. Uh, then he gets an extra Panzer Pioneer. He gives both of them the Flammenwerfer, which ends up being really helpful for clearing garrisons. Then he gets a Panzer Jaeger half track assault group. Then a total of six Panzer threes during the course of the game, as well as a bunch of the upgrades. Um, at one point, he replaces a lost Panzer Pioneer, and he replaces the Kradschutzen when it dies. For a toilet guy playing uh, as the U.S. Advanced Infantry Battle Group, he starts with two scout squads, then two rifle squads. He gets a mortar out, then he texts the ISC, so he gets a captain. Uh, he converts one of his rifle squads to a ranger squad, and he gets two more rifle squads during the course of the game. Uh, gets a second M1 mortar. Gets a replacement captain when his first one dies. Uh, ends up going motor pool. Gets two more, uh, two AT guns, and then two M24 chaffies at the end of the game, as well as an engineer squad for repairs. All right, so Garrett, we were talking uh, kind of off screen about how the Flakverling was the MVP of that match. So if you're a toilet guy, if you're USF, especially with an infantry heavy build, what do you do to counter that so it's not vet three with fifty some kills at the end of the game? Yeah, it's tough because it's such a mobile uh, unit. It, we, we saw him try to force down the middle a lot and just head straight at it, but it could just back up a little bit, kite him. I think you really need to try to get, you need to spread your units out, just the same as you would for an, M, mm -hmm. for, uh, for an MG gun. If You, you, you got to go outside the cone, or at least distract it with one unit, and then have a you know, rifleman with a snare sprint around the side get that snare off hopefully you know in a, in a perfect world and then you can try to rush it but it just kept feeling like he was throwing all his units in a straight line down to that fuel point which i get you want to keep that fuel point but there may have been a more strategic way to get that flak truck out of there early on yeah that that makes sense to me i like the idea of keeping your infantry spread out uh i think he was smart right he used the sprint ability or the the vet one upgrade rather than pour it on him i think i normally default to pour it on him to win infantry engagements but he clearly had his rifleman set up for anti-vehicle so sprint makes more sense uh, you know eventually he gets the motor pull out so you get the at guns you get the chaffees those i think are a good answer they just showed up a little late uh so i think the only other option that i can think of you have the weapon support center a zook squad's not going to do any better than the rifles but you can build the half track and upgun it with the 75 mil. And that's just a little bit more mobile. Uh, you can use it to, to barrage if you need to, if it's in the fog of war, that might allow you to get that extra shot off before you need to necessarily spend the fuel on the motor pool or on a chaffee. But I think he had to, he, for him to be successful, he probably needed to do that earlier in the game. Yeah. Uh, um, and then the, the other thing we talked about that I wanted to highlight is uh, he tried to go full ranger, right? So, you know, talking to Ares, like the standard, if you want to go all out rangers, the build is you get four to five rifle squads on the field, you tech to captain, and as soon as you had the fuel, you go advanced logistics because that makes the ranger uh, rangers tolerable to lose, right? They don't uh, suck down your manpower as fast. Um, and then you upgrade as many of those squads as possible. Uh, he really didn't do that. He had one squad of rangers. He kept them very anti-infantry focused. And then, like you said, he was using them almost as scouts to cap up the side of the map. Uh, and then the last piece of that is when he chose the the boys, right? Like the you know infantry assault push rather than the weapon training. Even if he had upgraded those squads, the rifle squads to rangers, uh, they wouldn't have gotten the the bazooka kind of vehicle stun bonus. Um, to me, this kind of highlights the risk of being like one foot in, one foot out with a strategy or a build order. Uh, I, I wonder if he was just, he felt he was so strapped for manpower that he couldn't, couldn't execute it. Uh, I don't know, like, is there another way to go about that? Would you have pivoted sooner or would you have dug in uh, harder with the Rangers? It's interesting because for this build, what he was doing, it seemed like he wanted to, he really wanted to focus on using the rangers as anti-infantry mm -hmm. but there just wasn't much infantry on the field and so i i can get it why he pivoted from uh getting those ranger upgrades and i think i think if you if you wanted to make them uh that weapons training upgrade earlier yeah you, you should have done that like to the to the two the the two riflemen uh two bazooka rifleman squad that should have probably been the ones that he would have upgraded and then got the weapons training upgrade. Mm -hmm. But like you were saying, maybe he just thought 
Uh, he was being bled too much by manpower. I mean, Alpenwell's build was pretty much the perfect counter for what Toilet Guy was trying to do. And it was funny because you could tell Alpenwell was, he was waiting for like a vehicle to hit. He was a little concerned, right? He got the Panzer Jaegers out before uh, there were any vehicles out for, for Toilet Guy. Uh, but you're right. Playing with just Panzer Pioneers, a single squad of Bursas to help cap because they sprint when they're out of con- uh, combat. Uh, and then he gave his Panzer Pioneers, not, he's not worried about mines, so he gave them both uh, Flammenwerfers, which really helps when uh, Toy Guy tries to use the garrisons. So you've got this like mobile repair capability that's better than using you know Panzer Grenadiers to try to repair. Uh, you've got all these vehicles that take damage but don't actually bleed you manpower, and then you just start stacking, like upgrade on upgrade on upgrade. He says he forgot his upgrades. I don't know which ones he forgot, because it looked like he had everything. He had the survivability. I didn't, you can't see obviously if he has the tungsten, but then he had the rapid advance, right? The ability for vehicles to cap and move faster. He had the repair kits. Uh, so I don't know what upgrades he said he forgot. The only thing we didn't see that I was really expecting with his fuel advantage was the armored reserves and the tiger. Yeah, I think when he, I checked over when he said he forgot his upgrades and I saw him upgrading the tungsten rounds. So he must have realized after he saw the chaffee mm-hmm. and the P3s weren't. I don't know if, it, if the shots weren't doing enough damage. That's when he must have realized he didn't do that one. But yeah, he did do the other ones. I didn't see a shot bounce on the chaffee. I can't imagine a situation where a P3 doesn't Yeah, I can't doesn't imagine it either. Um, <laughs> other, you know, other things that we saw uh, from like a micro perspective that I really liked, a lot of good use of attack ground through hedgerows, through smoke uh, to get shots that connected. There's a little bit of RNG there, but... I mean, uh, totally I got a couple of hits to a hedgerow and actually smoked. Uh, I think he got kills on two P3s with attack round. So impressive there. Uh, the mortars also did a lot of work. Uh, I know some people have a tendency to like leave the mortars in the back and let them just kind of do their own thing. But I think if you micro a mortar well, it just becomes such a nuisance. Uh, and you said the mortar almost killed the flak half tra- or the flak for laying early. Man, if that had gone down to a mortar round, that would have totally swung this game. Yeah, that would have been huge at that point. And I think I think that's where Toilet Guy was. He was real close a handful of times. Uh, when he had those, when when Alpenwell pushed with those three P3s and they were pretty damaged, but his, his AT guns just weren't set up in yeah. a good spot and the two Chaffees weren't able to, to do much. That was a, he only got one of those P3s. If he could have got two of them, I think that would have been a lot bigger. Yeah, and, and I like... I, the idea of keeping the AT guns separate, a lot of times you see people group them and attack move, and so they sit right next to each other, and that makes them really susceptible to, to AOE weapons, to artillery, to, to tank rounds. So keeping them separate is good, especially when you have rifle squads to snare. I think the downside, though, is they were, like you said, they were too far apart and not oriented the right way, and so the P3s just drove past them. But you get, really got to hand it to Toilet Guy managing the VPs as well as he did, you know, because he was losing more or less every engagement but he kept the VP race really tight. And so that speaks to his ability to play like the, the breadth of the map and keep control of a wide array of units relatively effectively. Did you have, uh, did you have anything else you want to highlight from the game? I think that was uh, an interesting build from DAC. I may have to try to recreate that in 1v1. Yeah, it's, it's high risk, high reward, because if you lose those vehicles early, you, you lose a lot of invested manpower and some fuel. But if you keep them alive, Oh man, it's such a pain for the allies to deal with. I don't know that this works against Brits. You know, Brit infantry sections, first off, the Dingo early, the Humber, the Stuart, uh, and the boys' AT rifles. Uh, I think they have less aim time than the Zooks, and so I feel like this strategy a lot less effective. Yeah, if you if you have a flak truck that's even slightly damaged, a Humber, a Humber can chase it down. Well, Garrett, really appreciate you taking the time to, to join me with this one. Yeah, happy to be here. Always always happy to be on. Hey, everyone. So what we got here is uh, Alpenwell, uh, who submitted the video in the cast, the winner of the game. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, uh, Shark. I'm doing doing great. How about you? Um, I'm awesome. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk about this. Um, I figured, given the opportunity, we would just go through and ask you a couple of questions uh, that Garrett had and I had about your thought process during the game. So the first one we noticed, uh, you had a very vehicle heavy approach, right? You had at, you know two squads of Panzer Pios, one squad of Bursas, and, and when they died, you didn't really even uh, rebuild them. But everything else was vehicles, Kratzschitz and Half-Track, 
uh, flag for laying P3s um, was, you know, obviously that was deliberate. What was your thought process uh, going up against Toilet Guy and USF? As a main dark player, um, which I am, obviously, I um, always try to take a, a mech approach at my enemies um, just because I think that the faction is uh, meant or designed to play like this. Um, you got all the upgrades uh, from your um, uh, upgrade building. I don't know what it's called at the moment. Armory, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, if you, I see a lot of players like going for the uh, Bursa uh, spam, which is currently meta, like going for free Bursa squads, building the med truck, and um, try to um, secure like a strong point on the map. Mm -hmm. Which, you, which I think you can play that too, but. Um, yeah, then, then you'll be lacking a lot of stuff like uh, manpower because you always have to reinforce. And um, also you will lack ammunitions because you will throw grenades and upgrade your bursts with MGs. Yeah. And um, yeah, and all, all the stuff um, that comes together just makes me think that really a um, faction that should be played like a mech style. Mm -hmm. And I also back in uh, my StarCraft two days uh, where I played Terran, mm -hmm. I uh, always played Mech. Well, it it makes sense now knowing that you have a StarCraft two background. Uh, the micro was really impressive, especially on the the flak verling, keeping that thing alive to vet three all the way through the end of the game. I think Garrett said it had fifty three kills by the end of the game. That's more than the entire USF side had put together. Uh, so, so pretty impressive there. And I suppose if you have the micro, then DAC become really, really difficult to counter with that sort of a mechanized build. Then the next question that we had, at least during the cast, was uh, you kind of kept the Panzer III train rolling, right? And obviously when you upgrade them with the survivability kit and the emergency repairs and the, the tungsten rounds, they become very formidable. But we were wondering, you know, as you built your fifth or your sixth Panzer III, why not go for the armored reserves, why not get a P4 out, why not get a Tiger? Yeah, um, that's a very funny question, which um, I um, asked myself um, <laughs> a few we we weeks ago too, but um, I, I I didn't have an answer to this. Sometimes I would go for the Tiger, and um, but then I, uh, or, or some a good friend of uh, me, uh, a battle buddy, if you w want to call him like this, he's mm -hmm. called Mule. He's also playing uh, Co Free. Mm -hmm. He gives he gave me the right answer to this. Um, so the the tiger, uh, in my point of view, is um, not a instant win button. You know, mm -hmm. many people consider it like this. Like I build a tiger, I win. Mm -hmm. But um, you will only win uh, with the tiger on the field if you're already winning. So um, you it, it will not turn around the game like 180 degrees. And what he always says, what Mule always says, is like, how many Panzer threes or Panzer fours even could you get for a Tiger? Building one Tiger would mean to uh, not build a three, maybe three and a half Panzer threes. Yeah. So that's uh, my main point of view here with all the at abilities your enemy has like he had uh i think three or four rifles with bazookas yeah uh the ranger squadron two at guns uh if he catches me off guard throws two snares at the same time he can yep. easily mow down the tiger mm -hmm. um while if he if i have four pens of threes which my at the game my goal was uh building yeah he he, he can't do that that easily and i'm also entitled to um like pair three panzer threes and the flag gun with one panzer three to do a um two uh a staged a, a pincer movement uh, if you will yeah so um which the tiger would make a little bit difficulty because of the pop cap limitation and um yeah and it, that's it, the main it, reason why i go didn't go for the don't go for the tiger at least in once right no, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, for maybe for players whose micro isn't as good, who can't handle having multiple vehicles on the field at the same time and using them effectively, maybe the Tiger is a little bit of a crutch there to make up for it. As long as, like you said, you have some way to screen for it, 
so it doesn't get double snared, it doesn't get caught out by uh, some infantry with AT gun support. Um, and so I think if you use the, you know, the Tiger as an anvil uh, rather than the hammer, uh, you know, maybe yeah. it helps. But in this particular game, the other thing, and the reason I think you are, you're right in your approach is Toilet like Guy was actually doing a really good job keeping the VP pressure on. And the Tiger just doesn't move as quickly as the P3s. And so if that's the vehicle you're trying to maneuver around the map to maintain pressure, it suddenly becomes a lot less effective. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. You lose, you lose a lot of mobility with that too. That's right. Then the last question I'll ask you, and this is something I, I try to focus on uh, when I watch these matches, is like, what does your <laughs> opponent do to turn the game around? So what could, what could he have done? What were you worried about him doing that you thought, oh man, if he gets this out now, I'm in trouble? Toilet guy, he and me, we uh, we are playing a lot of uh, g games uh, at the ladder uh, against each other, mm -hmm. and um, he is a very formidable opponent. Yeah, and the the problem with him is um, you never know what's coming. Like mm -hmm. uh, when when you play against me, you're gonna know. Okay, he's going to play some style of mech. Mm -hmm. He's going he's going for a fast T3, you know. Mm -hmm. But toilet guy, he is absolutely uh, a menace uh, at <laughs> mind games also because you don't know what's coming next and um, i think he had the right approach um with the at guns and he was starting to spam chaffies mm -hmm. which is um, an absolute uh, counter to this build yeah. because um the chaffies are much cheaper um plus with their flanking speed they can maneuver around the panzer freeze very easily yeah, and um, the AT guns can deliver um, a decisive punch from uh, the back while while the while the eight, while the Panzer Freeze are fighting Treffies. Yeah, and that's how uh, I um, also lost games with this strategy. And um, yeah, I I think that's how he could have turned the game around. I mean, like um, he was on the um, he he had me on the back foot um, later. Mm -hmm. But uh, I took that lucky engagement um, between the uh, the right, I, I call it, or let's say just the north VP and the middle VP, mm -hmm. um, where my um, RT cover um, caught yeah. his uh, artillery guns, and he had to choose either to rush in with his uh, chaffies or to um, like get punished by the artillery, uh, which gave me the upper hand there yeah. and basically ended. Yeah, so, you know, obviously you don't see this because there's no indicator for you when you're playing, but he, one of the first things he did after he got the infantry support center was the advanced <laughs> logistics, which is a 70 fuel upgrade. Now, normally I see people do that when they want to play really ranger heavy because it makes the rangers more viable. Uh, it makes losing models a lot more tolerable. But then he didn't, he only had the one ranger squad. Uh, and so yeah. I, I think the issue was... If he had not done that, if he had saved that fuel and gotten the motor pull up sooner, gotten Chaffee's out sooner, he might have had you in a little bit of a pinch. But he stayed on yeah. that infantry bent for just a little too long. Absolutely, yeah. But but also the rifleman posed like a, a very uh, large threat to 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 my tanks and of luck feeling. I yeah. uh, I I lost two or three occasions almost to uh, flex. That that just proves uh, like. How good he is, like at managing my superior build at that moment, um, uh, and and yeah, he's just putting on pressure with like uh, having the uh, inferior strategy. And that's just that's how dangerous he is in a one v one. Yeah, no, you, there were definitely moments where both of you guys uh, demonstrated just how well you can micro subway understand the game. Uh, super fun to watch. Um, thanks for letting me, uh, let me ask you some questions. Really appreciate it. And, uh, thanks for sending in the replay. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.